Hi, I'm Ben, one of the chefs at Sorted Food, and today I'm going to show you how to make cheese sauce two different ways. It stems from a mother sauce, bechamel. It's a basic, you're going to want to learn it because you can use it for so many different things. The first dish we're going to do has got your name all over it, Mike. Kimchi mac and cheese. Oh, I can't wait. It starts with a white sauce that we turn into a cheese sauce, and then we'll turn it into a mac and cheese. And basically, no recipe. There's only three ingredients in this basic white sauce. Butter, flour, and milk. We're going to start with the butter. So into a pan over a medium heat, you're going to add about a heaped tablespoon of butter. Now you can't really tablespoon of butter, but cut it off the block or the stick of butter so you end up with about a heaped tablespoon. Throw it in the pan. Now you want to let that melt down. It will begin to foam. When it goes quiet, you're then going to add in the same quantity of plain flour, so a heaped tablespoon. Now you can weigh it out, and it's about 50 grams of butter, and it's about 40 grams of flour. Fine, but a heaped tablespoon of butter and a heaped tablespoon of flour is all you need to remember. So there we go. The butter's completely melted. It's foaming, and that's really the key for whenever you're cooking in butter. You want it to foam, then you want it to sizzle a bit. See how it's quieting down? Scatter in the flour, and then quickly stir it into a paste. Still over the heat, and you're just going to stir it until all of that flour combines into all of that butter. And then you're going to add milk a little bit at a time. Every time you add some milk, stir it again until it becomes lump free. And eventually you're going to add in a whole pint of milk. So it's a heat tablespoon of butter, a heat tablespoon of flour, and then a pint of milk. Now the initial stage, it'll actually look like it's getting thicker. And you'll think, how am I adding in liquid yet it's getting thicker? Don't worry. That's what it's supposed to do. But then add a little bit more. You'll see it'll go lumpy. Stir it until it's no longer lumpy, and then add in more. Some people choose to whisk a sauce. Personally, I've never bothered, because if you do it this way, it's lump-free anyway. Once that's combined, even a little bit more. This whole time, you're over a gentle medium heat. Now, this is not how I was taught to make a white sauce or a bechamel. Typically, the milk would be warm when you add it. Typically, you would have infused the milk in a pan with flavours, like an onion that you've studded with cloves, maybe a couple of bay leaves. It gives the milk flavour that you're adding to the sauce. That's the classic version. And if you're doing it just as a white sauce, maybe for layers in a lasagna, then yes, add that extra flavour. For me, midweek, I don't bother. I use the milk cold. I don't bother to infuse it because we're adding flavours later on. Now you can see it's nice and smooth. Once it starts to become more liquid, you don't want to add too much more until that has come to a bubble. So you want to heat it to a bubble, then add in more. At first, you do very small amounts. When you get towards the end, you can do bigger amounts until that entire pint is in. You do want to keep stirring it to make sure that it doesn't stick on the bottom, but once all the milk is added, you're then going to let it very gently simmer while you carry on stirring for another couple of minutes. And one last thing to add, one of your favourite words, Mike, if you don't want to use milk, use stock. Veg stock, fish stock, chicken stock, and what you end up with, exactly the same method, heat tablespoon of butter, heat tablespoon of flour, pint of stock, a velouté. And that can be the basis to chicken pot pie, that can be the basis to fish pie. You can make so many different dishes with this same method. I'm a chef and this is my velouté. <laughs> Once it's been gently simmering for a couple of minutes, you want to season it. If you're keeping it as a white sauce, salt, pepper and a little grating of nutmeg is traditional and delicious. We're going to leave the nutmeg out because we're going to divide this basic white sauce into two and I'm going to show you how to make two different cheese sauces with two different uses. Purists would say white pepper so you don't spoil the sauce, but I use what I have and don't give a monkeys. Genuinely, this is how I make a white sauce which I can then turn into a cheese sauce at home. This method, it's not traditional but it is awesome and it will work. You don't even have to put the chef's jacket on to do it. Thank goodness for that, because I care about how I look. Oi, I quite like this, this rendition of chef's jacket. 
That was unnecessarily mean for me. Oh, I apologize, mate, sorry. These quantities obviously make you a pint of white sauce, which you then turn into cheese sauce. That would be enough for four portions of the two dishes we're making, if it's a side dish or a light lunch, or two portions if it's a meal. How do you know when it's ready? Well, one, the consistency, you should be able to draw a line through the back of a spoon and it hold that line. That's the kind of consistency you're looking for. And then taste it and make sure it's A, seasoned and B, not chalky or floury. It should be smooth and silky and absolutely delicious. Which that is. For a cheese sauce, obviously you want cheese and it should be a real cheesy cheese so you get lots of flavour. For this first one, I'm gonna use a cheddar, a mature cheddar. And in terms of quantity, you want about three times as much sauce to grated cheese. So three to one as a ratio. If you go one to one, like super, super cheesy, it'll be really thick and you can let it cool down and you can spread it on toast and that becomes well shredded. Over the gentlest of heat, you're gonna stir through your grated cheese until it's all smooth. Once the cheese has melted into the sauce, then you can add your flavor. Fresh herbs, you could add some pesto in there. We're going for chopped up kimchi. So a nice crunchy kimchi, stir that through. And just watch the color that that turns this amazing sauce. Mm. So kimchi is a South Korean cabbage dish that's full of kind of chili and is fermented, so it's tangy as well. And I think that combo of kimchi and cheese was really made famous in LA several years ago in the street food trend, really kind of Mexican and Korean food combined. And that is why this just works so well. To turn it into our mac and cheese, I've just got pasta, which we've just boiled, still slightly al dente, because it is gonna go through the oven, and stir that in. Yes. <laughs> this is happy food. So easy. Yes, I know this isn't even macaroni pasta in a mac and cheese, but use whatever pasta you have in your staples cupboard. Finish it with a little bit of cheese and then into a hot oven, as hot as you can, or under a grill. You just want to colour it. The second dish, one of the internet's favourite, one of my favourite dishes, cauliflower cheese. Exactly the same white sauce as before. Obviously, I've already got half a batch that I saved. Into that, instead of cheddar, I'm gonna add blue cheese, a blue cheese cauliflower cheese, unreal. And exactly the same ratio as before, three to one, three times as much sauce to cheese. It's a strong blue cheese. Crumble it in and stir it in until it melts. Job done. Blue cheese isn't for everyone. Personally, I love it in a sauce like this, but you use whatever cheese you either have or that you love. Smoked cheese is really good in a cheese sauce. I'm saving you all the boring bits. Just like the pasta, I have boiled the cauliflower florets in salted water until just cooked and al dente. Then I've drained them. I'm gonna pour the sauce over the top and finish it with a crumb of breadcrumbs and almonds. And if that doesn't make you go wobbly at the knees, I don't know what will. Into an oven. There we go, two ways with cheese sauce, the kind of food that I love to cook midweek at home. Pair either of these with a crisp salad or some sauteed green veg and you've got a wholesome meal. And obviously mix up the flavors. Mix up the cheese, mix up the pasta shapes, mix up the additional flavors, put it over other veg other than just cauliflower. Make it your own. And if you want to give this new skill a go, then right now over on our Meal Packs app, there is a hybrid of the two, it is a one pot, cauliflower mac and cheese along with other recipes this week in your meal pack you can go and give it a go you have tasty food you'll save money in your shopping and it's free for a month go on go check it out ready for the second best part of this video we all know the first part was a bubbling cheese yeah that's so true do you know i know what kimchi mac and cheese tastes like and it's amazing i'd like to try your blue cheese big holly Look, I'm not going to lie, there's healthier ways to eat veg, but I don't think there's many that are tastier. <laughs> Great point. Oh, wow.